You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts. Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, along with Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian and Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionPit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. All right, everybody. That music means it is Thursday. It is noon central. It is 1 p.m. Eastern. It is time once again. For episode due of your bi-weekly options extravaganza, known as The Option Block, my name is Mark Longo from TheOptionsInsider.com. If you haven't been over there in a little bit, we got a lot of fun stuff over there for you, including all those ORATS reports you folks love, the earnings news, earning, earnings news, easy for me to say, earnings move, earnings move results, and earnings season reports. Guess what? They're all free. <laughs> you can't beat that. We twisted Matt and his team's arms over there at Orat said, give the info to the people. And they have done so. So we have it all pretty much compiled now for the pretty much current wrapping up season. We have a new one on the board. In fact, we just had Matt on the advisor's option just uh, yesterday, actually. So if you're in the pro club, you already got to hear his appearance. If not, you'll be hearing it on demand on the network in a little bit and you'll you'll hear what he has to say about his thoughts for the upcoming season let me just put it out there that it it could be an interesting one let me just leave you with that tease if you want to join the pros you can get access to all that fun live stuff not have to wait for the on demand of course you can access all of our live streams throughout the week and get access to the awesome pro q a's got another great one this week with the chief strategist over there at interactive brokers as well as upcoming options oddities tomorrow with uh, the formerly known as the Rock Lobster. But on that show, he is the Cyclops, the eye of the Cyclops. <laughs> Want to know why? You got to tune in to Options Oddities. The optionsider.com slash pro is the place to go for all of that fun. And of course, however you listen live after the fact, keep hitting us up, those questions, those comments, those insights, those pearls of wisdom. We do love to hear from all of you guys and gals out there. Let's see who we're hearing from on the show today. First, let's go out to the dark and stormy and frigid and just barren shores of Maine. No life at all to be found, except for one little dot on the map that is the Giovinazzi compound, where we are joined by the rockingest of lobsters, Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi from OptionPit.com. Now, might I add, from the newly cricket-free Giovinazzi compound, welcome to the show, Mr. Rock Lobster. What's the word for that? Is it cricket aside when you wipe out all the crickets? (laughs) Cricket aside. Well, amazingly to our listeners, they will not probably believe this, but how many crickets were causing all of the ruckus? According to you, you believe it was one very busy cricket. It was one very, notice the silence. The windows are closed and there is quiet in the office. So I'm thinking, yeah, it was just the one cricket. Man, it was loud. Before you question it, listeners, I do have proof of cricket death. Mr. Rock Lobster sent me a photo of the uh, of the now deceased cricket. He offered actually to uh, entomb it and send it to me in a plaque, which we may put up in the studio 
as the formerly noisy cricket, but intriguing stuff. So you can thank the newfound silence in the land of Maine to the end, the cricket aside, the rampaging cricket aside going on there (laughs) on the shores of Maine. Let's go on out now to the hinterlands of Chicago, specifically to St. Charles, where we are joined once again. By the uncleist of Mike's, Mr. Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Advisors. A, welcome back to the program. And B, have you had any genocidal rampages against insects since we last spoke, sir? I can't say that I have. The other day, I was just thinking when I woke up, I think I'm up for a genocidal. Um, just I, I, I hate all these insects. I'm going to kill them, but uh, I, I don't have that problem, thankfully. So um, I'm good. So you're saying you had a genocidal rage, but then it passed. You had your morning coffee and you were good? I was good. I'm all set to go now, now that the genocidal rage is gone. <laughs> you know, we all have those urges in the morning. You wake up, want to wipe out some species off the planet. Then you have your morning beverage and you're good to go. And now we are all assembled. We are good to go. It is time for the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for... The Trading Block. All right, everybody. Welcome to The Trading Block. And you know, it's been one of those weeks. I said it to you on Monday's show, as you recall, listen. I said, we're in for a lot of DC watching this week because there's a lot of dollars, a lot of money on the table this week. This whole will they, won't they dance, it seems to come around every few years down there in DC where one party tries to hold the other hostage and vice versa and We're going to go right up to the wire with the debt ceiling. Will we make it? Who knows? It's a cliffhanger, but we usually always do. (laughs) And then, of course, we have other issues like spending and everything else. A lot of dollars at stake down there this week. And so, of course, that's why we've seen a lot of topsy-turviness to this market. We saw, of course, sell-offs earlier this week. Coming into today, it seemed like we were poised for some green. And then we saw things turn to the dark side. Coming at the showtime, most of the major indices were in the red. Looks like NASDAQ has just ticked back into the green. So maybe we're, we're set for one of those days again, listeners, where we could rally. And then we sell off pretty hard. Dow is still off over a percent. s and is off over half a percent. So we're still pretty firmly in the red in a lot of those areas. But uh, intriguing stuff nonetheless. NASDAQ up about a tenth of a percent coming into showtime. So again... I don't like where the markets are these days, listeners. Just wait five minutes. <laughs> You'll have a whole new set of data to analyze and parse. Coming into showtime, uh, we did have VIX threatening a 24 handle, 23 and three quarters. That puts it up over five points, almost five and a quarter points from where it was on Monday's show. So all that DC spookage creeping right back into the vol products. We got VIX coming into showtime right at that what used to be the former floor for VIX in the pandemic era, which is 120, now back up to that level, up about 12 points from where it was on Monday's show. We had VXX coming to showtime at about a 28 even. That puts it up about three points from where it was on Monday's show. And UVXY, the product everybody likes to see go down. Going back up today, up to was about a 25 or so, very close to it coming at the start of the show. That puts it up about four and a quarter points from where it was this time on Monday. And Val Q. The ever, ever effervescent at the money vol of the NASDAQ 100. Back in the 20 handle as well, 24.65, up about six and a half points from where it was on Monday's show. Was that a 15 handle not too long ago, listeners? We're talking almost a 10 point swing out there in VolQ, a product that really doesn't move a whole heck of a lot. We saw it locked in the, you know, the 16 range for how long out there? So intriguing to see it now suddenly getting some lift along with everything else out there. This DC dance. Tending to lift all boats, at least from a vol perspective. Let's go out now. He's fresh off the murder of so many crickets. Their blood still on his hands as he hits the mute button on his microphone. <laughs> Mr. Rock Lobster, sir. Let's lighten up your tape in a week where vol cometh, then it goeth. and looks like it's coming again, but maybe it's going to start going again. We'll see. Um I'll tell you what, they're, uh, they're not really taking a lot of orders. I've got some... Uh, some SPY call, um, some put butterflies. I'm working here. I thought I was going to get better fills and they're just, they're just not, I'm just saying there's just not a lot of, uh, there's not a lot of fill up here, uh, on these. 
that I don't, it does not feel like a market with a lot of uh, conviction, let's say. Um, definitely running away from orders. You know, you think you're trading here. Uh, oh, there you go, I got to fill. But I had, I had to drop things a nickel to get filled. So, um, but uh, as of right now, you know, you, you got, um, uh, like, like the vols bid because nobody wants to do anything. So the natural inclination, if there's no public selling to just, you know, for the vault to go up. Um, so it's, it's kind of the path of least resistance. Okay. So nobody's really playing. So the vault's going to go up. It's kind of like, uh, I don't know that movie, like, uh, that movie that was, uh, uh, cloudy with the chance of meatballs or something like that. It was a goofy movie. Uh, and the guy made it, a jello house, you know, and the vol is kind of like that. You know, you can push your finger through the jello house. Oh, I want to go buy some options. Like, you know, you're pushing your finger through um, until you get filled. So that's a lot. I think what uh, liquidity wise right now is the way I'm, I'm seeing it as I try to, um, uh, you know, exit some of the long vol that I have today, you know, and I just kind of keep piecing it out until, uh, you know, this event's over. So we'll see what happens. Uh, that's, it's kind of what it feels like, uh, and I and I I'm curious to see what Mr. Tusa says um, on the little bitsky. We have like silver is a 52 week low as of um, today or yesterday. Traded a 52 week low, and we remember we uh, or uh, with all the um, uh, with all of the okay inflation and this and that and that, 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 like uh you know and silver's at a 50 so again a lot of weird signals it's like i almost feel like the fed can sort of do whatever they want you know there's no there's no inflation screw inflation you know <laughs> the price of silver is going down we're gonna make it go down. um and uh you just can't you know I, you just can't get in their way really so i find it um you know, I find it very curious. So, you know, from from that point of view, uh, you got you kind of got that. But there there is a bid for the miners today, a little bit uh, from very I think pretty sold conditions. Uh, people just getting out, getting out. Um, and I would say there's a tepid bid for volatility. So the VIX is kind of again that, like I said, that jello squishy uh, vol condition um, in the markets. But when you look at the actual VIX futures, they are amazingly down on the day. So, you know, you kind of got what you got there. Uh, and uh, that's that's what I'm seeing. So I got a squish. We got a squishy ball day until this bunch of people in Congress. You know what? I, I, I just like them to do like one thing. Like, you know what? Why don't we spend the next four years? improving education but without spending a whole lot of money let's just do that let's just improve public education let's see if they can do one thing one thing uh improve public education without spending a whole lot more money let's try that you know um but i don't think they're gonna do it you know let's let's have a rational immigration like they can't do anything rational like i just argue you know there's no police reform at all coming out of congress they couldn't agree on anything like you know, you had a whole summer of riots, basically. So the Congress is, you know, it's pretty useless right now. Um, but that's what we got. So uh, anyway, um, as far as, you know, until this debt thing gets out of the way, it's it's like the, the sword of Damocles hold, hanging over the market. And until that goes away, we're just sitting here dealing with squishy ball. That's, um, that's my opinion, and I'm sticking with it. If you're looking for anything outside of spending from DC, sir, you're, you're looking in the wrong place. <laughs> they can spend. <laughs> they have proven an ability to spend uh, at levels that are unprecedented in all of history. But uh, outside of that, to actually getting things done. If you're looking to DC to get stuff done, I don't care what side of the aisle you're on, or if you're hopefully somewhere in the middle, all you level-headed bunches out there, then uh, yeah, no, uh, no bueno for you out there, unfortunately. Just a lot of loggerheads a lot of partisan rancor, and a lot of spending, and not a heck of a lot else. Uh, let's keep on rolling out there to the land of the Uncleist of Mike's. Uncle Mike, a lot of things popping off in your neck of the woods today. 
What is lighting up your tape, sir? Oh, we got all sorts of stuff going on today, but all of it does stem from what's happening in Washington, D.C. We start off the day uh, to where we are rallying, and uh, then uh, we kind of fell off the map. We had a really big movement uh, to the downside. We were actually up, uh, If they, uh, just to give everybody an idea of it, right now the SPX is trading at roughly 43.30, I believe, if looking at my... Uh, screen here at roughly 43.30. Equivalent overnight in the futures, uh, we were at 4,500. For I'm sorry, 4,400. Uh, big difference. <laughs> 4,400 overnight. Uh, if the SPX were to trade overnight, equivalent to what the futures were, so we're 70 points off of the overnight high at this point in time. Uh, we were roughly 10 points up going into cash trading today, and then. Shortly after that, uh, we had a little bit of a rally as the market opened, but then shortly after that, uh, what happened was uh, there was um, uh, things going on in Washington. Uh, you see it on the on the TV, and so we had some problems from the standpoint that uh, people in Washington are talking and markets are going lower. I know that's a shocking thing to hear, but that is what actually happened on it. So. We had that to deal with. And then the thing that I found most bullish of the sell-off today, so far, I could be proven wrong on this, is that we did not test the lows that we made last Monday. Not uh, three days ago Monday, but the Monday uh, where we had the initial sell-off. We were at in the low 4,300s, but we did not test the lows of that sell-off as of yet. So we're still above where we were in the sell-off earlier last week, but we have still sold off. So that is one area with which we are. Now, in regard to silver, uh, if I wasn't in it so much right now, I'd probably be buying it. And so I think that, I mean, not for all my clients, just for the my silver people, but I like the levels it's at right now just because of the fact that uh, we were much higher, it's lower, and we have not had the crazy silver freakish pop that we seem to have every 10 years in about 10 years. So I actually would like silver at these levels if I was not in it already. Silver is kind of something to where uh, it bores you to death for years and years and years, and then like a thief in the night, uh, it just goes up all of a sudden. And then it goes back down. And so inst instead of being a buy and hold person like you would in a stock, hoping it trends, goes up three points, goes down two, goes up three, goes down two, and continually goes up in that 45 degree angle line that you hope for. Uh, Silver is kind of something to where it stays flat, 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 flat. Then all of a sudden it triples out of nowhere and then goes right back down. We have not had that major move in silver in a long time. And the fact that it is pulling back right now, if you're like me, you're consistently watching it and being bored to death on it and then just waiting for some freakish event to happen to make it go up to the stratosphere. Um, not saying that I know of any freakish events coming, but we haven't had any in a while that have made silver go up significantly higher. So we have that going on. Now, in terms of uh, this market where I think we are right now, is we're pulled back. And if you are a bull like me, this is a nice buying opportunity. But uh, understand that until we get this debt ceiling uh, debacle situation, whatever you want to call it, until we get this dealt with, then we're going to have very volatile days. And that's just the way with which it is. And so for my put spreads, I have my lines in the sand with which I will get out of them. Uh, should we cross those lines in those sand or even come close to them, quite honestly? And then for my call spread, uh, the butterfly that has turned call spread from uh, that I discussed on the show a little over a week ago, that one I'm actually holding on to a little bit longer because I had a very uh, limited risk to begin with. So that's one to where I can hold out a little bit longer because of the fact that if I lose 100%, yes, of course, I don't want to lose 100%, but 100% of a small amount is not necessarily a bad thing. So that's kind of how I'm playing this at this point in time. Um, the main concern with which I have right now is my short premium, but the line in the sand is drawn with a very wide Sharpie marker. So that is what I am seeing right now. There you go, Uncle Michael. It's like our listeners are agreeing with you when it comes to SLV. We've got Unlimited in the chat saying, 
I'm with Mike. I sold SLV puts today, so I guess he doesn't have a bunch like you, Mr. Uncle Mike, but he's uh, maybe loading up on some at these levels. So there you go, Uncle Mike. You've talked our listeners into the dark side of silver. Are you proud of yourself, sir? Uh, I make no recommendations on this show, so to keep my compliance people happy. You just whispered in his ear, SLV, SLV. <laughs> Before we move off of Uncle Mike type of day, Uncle Mike, you know, you got all this excitement. You're all fired up about silver. We maybe, who knows, maybe we'll turn into an Uncle Mike day. It already is kind of an Uncle Mike day if you're hanging out in the NASDAQ. Unfortunately, though, I have to throw some cold water on all this enthusiasm. So hopefully you're ready. Brace yourself. I got some bad news because I know I've said it many times. Your favorite name out there. You know, you always joke about the Cisco's, but in reality, we know your favorite names, your favorite segment. You do all of your clothes and everything else shopping. Of course, Dollar Tree. And I got bad news for you, sir. They announced just yesterday, Dollar Tree, no longer Dollar Tree. They're going to be raising their prices. They are now going to be a buck and a quarter tree, maybe all the way up to, dare I say it, a buck and a half tree to pay for higher freight and wage costs. So, you know, all that inflation that's so transitory the Fed was talking about, well, guess what? Dollar Tree is going up to a buck and a half now. So uh, where's your where's your transitory inflation now? They say Dollar Tree's price hike comes amid a flurry of problems affect, inflicting their chain and everything else. Uh, they're also leaning into, get this, selling higher priced $3 to $5 items. They have the Dollar Tree Plus catalog now. It's a little rich for your blood, Uncle Mike, so maybe you don't want to head out there. Uh, they already have those 340 stores. going to be up to 1500 uh, And, of course, they're buying back the stock. So the news of the price hike at Dollar Tree and the stock buyback shot the stock up nearly 17%. So the market liked it. But, Uncle Mike, sad news. I don't think you can uh, buy your wardrobe there anymore, sir. I don't know what I'm going to do. Hopefully I have enough clothes to last me until I I, I don't know what I'm going to do. Thankfully, we still got Goodwill, I guess. So, But I have to pay five times the price and pay $5 for a pair of jeans instead of a dollar. Yeah, I mean, forget about it. You're never shopping at five below. I know you. That's way too rich for your blood. But yeah, Dollar Tree Plus. Who knew that was such a thing? When I saw this, it just screamed. It screamed Uncle Mike to me. Uh, So yeah, interesting times. Maybe Powell should spend a little time at the dollar store before he starts arguing about transitory inflation. <laughs> I get it. There are other logistical things feeding into there. that aren't exactly inflation, but they do end up causing inflation. So intriguing stuff. Nonetheless, I'm not here to argue about inflation in the Fed. Let's just keep on rolling instead. Hot off the presses. Hot in my little hands right now from the team over there at Orats. We got the updated earnings move, earnings move results and earnings season reports. Again, we're kind of winding down this season, getting ready to gear up. The machine never really stops. It kind of just slows down towards the end of the cycle, and then it just gears up right into hot and heavy mode again. So the the ORAT's earnings machine never really gets a break. It's kind of a a sad life for it, but it's good for all of you. You guys benefit from its slave-like working conditions because you get data on all kinds of good stuff. This week we had Micron on Tuesday. We had CarMax and Bed Bath & Beyond. Actually, today. So we got some hot off the presses earnings move results reports right now for Bed Bath & Beyond and CarMax. It doesn't seem like it was that long ago that we were doing that, that, which is going to die first poll, Bed Bath & Beyond or GameStop. I think it might have been October of last year. So I guess it was coming up on a year ago now, which seems crazy to me. But of course, so much has happened since then, not the least of which being GameStop became the the king of the memes and kicked off this whole new wave in the market. So if we had that in our poll, you would have thought we were insane. Hey, is GameStop perhaps going to be saved by a massive groundswell of retail enthusiasm that will drive the stock up to, oh, near a thousand and over a thousand volatility and cause the company to be infused with a ton of cash. If that was our third option in our poll, you would have called the nut house and said, go pick these guys up. Yet that is what came to pass this year. So those are the world we're living in here. Let's look at our numbers for today. We have Bed Bath & Beyond, the other half of our death poll out there. We had some interesting times of late. They were popping off before the bell. They went into their announcement about 22 and a quarter. They were pricing in 12.1%. And get this, listeners. They did some moving to the tune of 25, almost 25 and a half percent out there. So we had some. 
We had some juice. We had some vol out there in good old BBBY. It is still off quite a bit. It's still off about almost 22% trading 1736. So it has bounced around 70 odd cents from that low of near 1660 where this report was taken, but still easily doubling their straddle out there. So that's Again, we've been saying for a while, maybe we're starting to see some green creep in towards the latter portion of the season. Maybe these are the moments where the worm is going to turn. Maybe next season will be the Rock'em Sock'em Robot season we've all been waiting for. Starting to see some of that sneak in, more than we have. And let's see, CarMax also popping off before the bell today. Oh, looks like you may be two for two, listeners. CarMax was at about 146 and a half going into their announcement today. They were pricing in 5.3%. They delivered, get this, 10.8%. So we have two names today, both pretty much at or doubling their earnings straddle. Wow. That is something we have not seen in quite some time. Let's go look where CarMax is right now. Listeners, we all know the used car market is crazy out there these days. They are still off 10, almost 10.5%, right around 15 and a quarter. So they're still pretty much doubling their straddle out there. So, wow, just two huge announcements here, at least from an earnings ball perspective. Uh, We're still hanging out right now at about an 86%. It'll take a few more announcements like this to really goose those numbers a little bit. But if you look at the trend here, last two weeks of the season here, we're 107% and 100%. So those are the two greens. So not a lot of dark red towards the latter portion of the season. So is this the moment? I've been burned before making that prognostication, listeners, so I'm reluctant to go back into those fires yet again, but we are starting to get those those whiffs, those glimpses. There's a little bit of more smoke out there that perhaps something is afoot. Maybe, maybe something is going to kindle. Let's look ahead to next week really quickly, see if we got anything else that could perhaps get us excited out there. Let's go out first to PepsiCo. They're also down the street. Over here, we're surrounded by a lot of headquarters. <laughs> it's Mickey D's, Boeing, PepsiCo is not that far away. Well, yeah, all kinds of stuff right down the street here from the studios. Uh, PepsiCo here, October 4th after the bells, so obviously next week. They're pricing in 152, almost 152 and a half. That's where they're trading, I should say. They're pricing in, in 316. In the past, they've moved 216. So they've actually added a buck's worth of juice. So roughly a third to their straddle. That's interesting. I haven't seen a lot of names doing that. Usually it's the other way, taking a third off the top. Interesting. So perhaps they're poised for a little bit more volatility in the beverage game out there. Let's also go out to Levi Strauss. They are on the 6th next week. They're at 25.65. They were pricing in a buck 59 in the past. They moved to buck 16. Wow. Starting to see Perhaps, dare I say it, listeners, a little bit of a trend out there that maybe some names actually putting some juice back in after they've been taking it out forever. We've also got on the sixth Constellation Brands. They make all the beverages, a lot of the adult beverages. So PepsiCo's got the other beverages, and then Constellation Brands got the adult beverages. Ticker symbol STZ. They're before the bell on the sixth. They were at nearly 210 going into this report. They were pricing in, oh, they went the other way, 832. And in the past, they've moved 986. So that's more along the lines of what we're used to seeing. But wow, today's reports blowing the doors off. And next week's reports, a lot of them starting to price in a little bit more juice. Have we seen? Have we seen the nadir of earnings vol? Hmm. I don't, that, that, that's intriguing to me, listeners, because this is the moment we've been waiting for quite some time for. And dare I say it? Perhaps it is afoot. Interesting times. Luckily, you have us and all those great ORAS reports to help you handle all this madness out there. The options is com. Go to the options, news, and articles tab. You'll see all the earnings reports tab right there. And you can go off to the races and just uh, read and analyze until your heart's content. As we keep on rolling, it is time for us to read and analyze some unusual activity. It is time for the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. (laughs) 
All right, everybody. Welcome to the Odd Block, the portion of the show where we get weird, we get wild, we get whimsical, we unleash the Eye of Sauron. Before we do that, Uncle Mike, looks like you are off the hook because Unlimited in our chat said he actually put that order on before the show started so your compliance can breathe a sigh of relief. You just whispered in his ear that he made the right call. So there you go, sir. You feel better, Uncle Mike? A lot better. All of Uncle Mike's compliance officers who are listening right now with red pens. You can breathe a sigh of relief. Unless you listen into this segment. We're going to go crazy. So watch out. <laughs> All right. First up, we're going to dial back the old Wayback Machine today, listeners, because there is a heck of a lot of stuff that we need to look back on. And it, it's just, it's so much. We could do many, many, many hours worth of many shows just cataloging and analyzing the litany, the legion, the plethora of trades that we have analyzed for you here on the show, listeners. So let's see how many we can get in today on Ye Old Odd Block. First, Mr. Rock Lobster, we're dialing the Wayback Machine all the way back to the heady days of August 23rd. We were all young and carefree and all was right with the world. Do you remember those days, Mr. Rock Lobster, all the way back to August 23rd, sir? Uh, I think... Let's see, that was 13 days. So I was probably just sketchily uh, coming out of my COVID malaise. You could very well have been. I think you're still in your malaise in many ways, but we'll see as our review continues. First off, on August 23rd's show, we reviewed and analyzed some line in the sand puts in Ballard Power Systems, ticker symbol BLDP or Buldapa. <laughs> this is the uh, manufacturer of proton exchange membrane fuel cell products. So they're out there in that hot again, cold again, on again, off again, fuel cell market. Depends on the day what's going on in this space. Oh, we all love it. Oh, this thing is dead. This is old tech. Back and forth we go on the fuel cells. It has been that way for decades now. And it will continue to be. I remember when I was just graduating college and my my younger cousin was getting an internship at a fuel cell company, you know, back in Connecticut. Mac, he was still in college. It was going to be the hot thing is the future. And this was probably, I don't know, late 90s. So <laughs> still not the thing. But so yeah, it, it's one of these things. It's always on the cusp. And thus it is always on the tip of our tongues out there. And certainly good for some interesting uh, options paper. I won't say where it's trading right now because it's a bit of a spoiler. Instead, let's go back to what we saw on the show. At the time, listeners, we profiled decent size, 26,100 of the SEP 13 puts going up. Paper blasting away on that bid for 11 cents. They got a whopping 11 cents, listeners. I think it was a meatball who was on the show with me for these ones, and I, I do recall he was not exactly enthused by the 11 cent level but say lobby if you are wondering this is a 56 and a half volatility let me give you a quick rundown of where this stock was really quickly before we keep going the stock a year ago was at 1510 and then it rallied all the way up to 40 almost 41 dollars actually hit 42 and a quarter intraday before closing at about 40 dollars and 90 cents on the 9th of february and then it went right back down to 1383 in may and it kind of was bouncing in that 13 to almost $16 range. Actually got up to 18 briefly in June. But other than that, kind of uh, 13 to high 16s range pretty much all that time. And on August 23rd, when this trade went up, the stock was at $15.72. So not that far away from its 52-week low out there. And someone said, you know what? The 13 strike this far and no farther, 26,100 times. I'm going to get a whopping 11 cents for it. If this stock breaks through the 13 strike, I'm buying it all. And Mr. Rock Lobster, by the way, there were no earnings in this. The earnings are on November 4th, so no earnings baked into this trade. And it looks like Mr. Rock Lobster, they ended up doing all right. The stock, let's see, let's go back over the last month and see exactly how low it got. But it never really, once they put it up on that level there on the 23rd, it never really threatened it too aggressively. On the 17th, the stock closed actually a little bit higher, 1584. And I think it got, looks like it got as low as around 15 and a half during that time. So it never really had a massive sell off over that time. It has sold off since. It has sold off quite a bit since then. It got as low as 13 and three quarters. That was yesterday and today up to about 14 and change, 1412. So 
It is substantially lower right now. Still not low enough to trigger those puts, but looks like Mr. Rock Lobster, their very cheap 11 cent line in the sand on the 13 strike ended up working out. They kept all of their $287,000. So that'll get you a pretty decent Ferrari for yourself or perhaps your significant other or perhaps a couple of used ones, one for you and one for them, sir. Uh, yeah, I, I was about to say, I, I do have one comment on uh, Dollar Tree, though. Uh, so as Dollar Tree was raising their prices, they also said they're going to buy back like $2 trillion worth of stock. And the stock was at $14 yesterday. <laughs> so um, very odd signals. Like you just come out of COVID, you're like, well, we just have all this money. Yeah. So we're just <laughs> it's like, are you hurting or are you not? What are you, right? Can't make any money, but we happen to be sitting on a ton of it. Uh, like I, I'm, again, scratching my head. Like, I, what the hell is the, it's like GE's reverse split. Like, like well, our stock should be a hundred off. It's like, what do these guys, they got, is this all they got to do? Anyway, sorry, valid power. Um, definitely, uh, this is, again, right in the sweet spot of Ferrari money, I believe. Um, and, um, uh, and it looks like it was successful. I mean, you know, it's, this stock, I I think how many people, I don't know if people follow it a lot, but it, I think it's simple has changed a couple times. And um, um, and it's always like, I don't know, I feel like it's Brazil. Like, we'll always be the next big thing. You know, Brazil will always be uh, like, I don't know, like, I'm not bashing Brazil, but it's like, oh, you know, well, it's ready to pop up, you know, <laughs> and it just. And these fuel cell things just never get anywhere. Um, so this to me is, I don't know, it always feels like it's on like green life support. Solar I get, but the, the, the fuel cell thing, unless it's like a miracle, I just, I don't see it. But apparently this person um, taking, a, I would say, a pretty big stab on these puts. Not, you know, 26,000, I think, is on the higher side that we've seen. Uh, even though it's like a thirteen dollars stock or whatever, but fifteen dollars stock, it's a pre- still a pretty good chunk, I think. Yeah, that was some size. That's what really drew our attention to. It wasn't so much the premium, eleven cents. That's uh, not going to blow anybody's skirt up. But you're right. Yeah, it is fast. I'm trying to remember. I think it probably was latest ninety seven when my my cousin was working out at this place, and the, that company had already been around for a while. I've been working in bro, and at the time, oh, this is going to be the thing. This proton and you know uh, fuel cells. This is the future. This is obviously way before. Electric cars were super hot and anything like that. So, yeah, it's one of those things that comes and goes and comes and goes. Maybe it's coming again. Maybe it's going again. I don't know. But this guy ended up making a little bit of money on these puts. Also, that same day, listeners, August 23rd, we went out to another name that I have right here. There we go. It is Trillium Therapeutics, ticker symbol Trill, T-R-I-L. This is an intriguing one. (laughs) It's a biotech. In case you couldn't tell by the name, listeners. And it has the chart of a biotech because a year ago it was trading about 14 and a quarter. Got all the way up in November to about almost 21 bucks. That was its high of the year. Then it sold off again a couple of sessions later to 11.78 by early December. So it got cut in half again. Then it kept trending lower by August coming into near showtime. It was $6.10. And the day before our show, it was actually trading $5.80, which is his 52-week low. And then, as these biotechs are wont to do, on the day of our show, it went from $6.09 at close on the 20th of August. And coming in on the 23rd, it opened $17.59. So, just straight up. (laughs) Straight up here. (laughs) Good old bio. If you showed me this chart and said, what is this without any name or any other legend attached? I would say that's probably a biotech. And that's pretty much it. either that is some crazy meme name. And that's pretty much exactly what we got here. And at the time, you know, you see a name like this popping. You might have thought, hey, you know, probably seeing some upside call buying some folks thinking this party is going to continue. This explosion is going on upside. But we didn't actually. We saw the other side of that, which is another trade we've been seeing more of lately, which I'm not sure how I feel about it. It's instead of the upside called by that we used to see to kind of catch the momentum, it's the other way. It's selling the puts. So in this case, we saw paper coming in 
blasting away at 13,905 of the SEP 15 puts for a whopping 15 cents right off the bid. That is about a 54 vol. More went up, another 1,855 went up for 20 cents. A total of 41,000 of these things traded on the day. Now, granted, that was a huge post earnings or post announcement day, whatever was going on out there that day. And so there could have been other paper going on with that, but still a lot of paper on those SEP 15 puts. We talked about some other names that have done this lately too, where they pop. And then instead of doing some of the other trades you might expect, they're selling puts into the teeth of the rally, including in some of the names where we've seen that they've been shown to regress aggressively right after the the pop. And in fact, Trillium earlier this year, their other big pop, they sold off again pretty hard. They were trading again. It's almost 21 bucks by in November 30th. And by December 9th, they were trading $11 again. So this thing could easily give up all of that and then some. So selling the puts, I'm not sure, especially for 15 cents, that probably would not be my go-to. But nonetheless, listeners, this is the time when apparently the sell-off, the regression did not come because the stock closed at expiration at $17.34. So two bucks and change north of the 15, excuse me, the 15 handle out there. So intriguing stuff afoot out there, listeners. So yeah, it looks like they kept they kept their monies out there, listeners. They made a little over 200 grand on that about 14,000 lot. If you start adding in all the other paper on that strike, they made about 600 grand. Again, we don't know if all the latter portion of that was all people were selling them. There might have been some back and forth on that strike as well. But you know, they made at least 200, probably a quarter of a million bucks on this trade. Could be all the way up to 600,000 plus on this trade. So that'll get you Mr. Rock Lobster using your metric, a decent Ferrari, or if they made the full amount, a couple of them, or maybe, you know, a Ferrari and then a decent kind of a vacation home somewhere. Sir. I decided to add some context to this one, just because that 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 number made sense. You know, like, and so that is right around, and I know the listeners think I'm crazy with the Ferrari thing, but that amount of money was right around the cost that's the base cost of an Enzo, a Ferrari Enzo. I'm just saying, you could get a nice fly <laughs> yellow 2003 Ferrari Enzo for about 659,000 mm. bucks. And they took in around six. So, right there, right there on the base cost. I'm just saying, right there at the cost. You can get a nice Ferrari Enzo, uh, you know, top speed, what, 280 miles an hour or something like that. <laughs> um, and it's a fine looking car. So, uh, what I like about this name is, uh, remember Star Trek that episode, the Tribbles? Were they were they the Dribbles or the Tribbles? Tribbles, yes, those Tribbles. Little, the Tribbles, those little furry. I, I wonder if they. This was kind of a uh, takeoff on the the, the Trillium. You know, it, it has it has the it certainly has a techie sound, but this stock kind of went just went straight up. So I'm not quite sure what the deal is. Probably got a drug went by or something. But anyway. Uh, once again, line of the sand puts uh, doing okay, are doing okay. And the, actually, now that I think about it, we'll, we'll, I know we'll laugh on it on the show tomorrow, but I think the only line in the sand puts that haven't made money yet this year, although they are going to get the dividend, I guess, so <laughs> is in Valley, which, of course, I sold some too, so. <laughs> <laughs> Rock lobster puts. <laughs> Those are a little bit. Those are a little bit meatier, though. And you know, you got the corporate yes. actions, and there's always, always gum up the works. And I was holding out for a nice contract adjustment, but yeah, they said no, no bueno for you, no contract adjustment. You get what you get. <laughs> In good old Vale, yeah, we'll get to that fun and some more on good old uh, oddities tomorrow. Let's get out of here so we can get some of you on the show. Let's go to our final name here. We're going all the way back now, listeners. August twenty third wasn't far enough back for you. Going all the way back to the heady halcyon days of August 16th. In particular, forget the biotechs and everything. We're going out. Let's go out to the land of love. In particular, Electronic Love, also known as Match Group, ticker symbol MTCH. They own all of it. <laughs> they own Match.com. They own uh, plenty of fish media. I'm not sure what that is. They own Tinder. They have all the, they, all the different sides of love. Match Group has cornered pretty much. Trading, well, I won't tell you where they're trading today. At the time, we profiled on the 16th, 30,221. These, these are some numbers here, listeners, of the SEP 115 puts going up for a buck oh two, pretty much, right 
through the bid, actually. The bid was uh, buck 23, so they crushed this thing. That's about a 47 volatility, if you are curious. The earnings are in November, so no earnings. And this is another one, Mr. Rock Lops. I think we're pretty much three for three in uh, line of the sand puts that never really got close when they put these up. The stock was at 133, so they were already a pretty distant line in the sand when they wrote them. They still got a buck for them, so that shows how much vol is in this compared to our other friend got 11 cents. So they got a buck o two, and the stock ended up going exactly the other way. <laughs> these, these, these puts just uh, never really looked like they were in danger at all. The stock took, in fact, when he sold the puts, that was on the 16th, it was pretty much close to the nadir. The stock got down to about 130, almost 131, and then just immediately bounced from there. That was the 17th, the next day. And just took off like a rocket. By the 10th of September, it was trading 164. So $30 passed where it was when he sold these puts. So it just took off in the other direction. So these puts never came close. Uh, let's see. The stock went out on expiration 157.14. And it looks like uh, they made a cool, oh, trace million dollars, Mr. Rock Lobster. That'll buy you some Ferraris boats and perhaps a couple of vacation homes or maybe a nice home just one home what do you think sir um this is quite a profitable little internet property of course you know you you make uh <laughs> you make an app for your phone so just people can uh, hook up in this godless society so um <laughs> <laughs> uh, no judgment yeah. here sir how dare you they just they provide <laughs> electronic love in all of its forms and facets yeah, yeah, yes, all all the ele- all the electronic love you can handle. Um, but I, I just funny, you know, I love the like Tinder match, Metic, O Cupid, Hinge, Pairs, Plenty of Fish, Art. <laughs> um, hey, what a concept. Um, I just wish I would have bought the stuff <laughs> a lot lower. Um, but uh, you get line of the sand. Um, you know, and I, this is a, I would say, a pricey but profitable, profitable property. Um, this is, I, I think, this is what a good one to trade. You know, like if the news is bad, like oh, you know, somehow their Tinder account went public and there was a, there's a, there's you know, a break in it, uh, break in the security or something like that, and the stock tumbles and and then they kind of fix it or whatever. So, um, but you know, pro- profitable, profitable, profitable uh, uh, company and. It get, this is a little bolder with a hundred dollar stock. You know, I guess they got their buck, so they got their money. But um, I would say it feels a little bolder action on this one. Uh, but again, it's trading one fifty at this point, so you know it's a win. This guy's saying, "I wish I bought that there stock." As we keep on rolling into your segment, it is time for the mail call. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for The Mail Block. All right, let's get to this here. Mail Block, we got some questions out there for you. We uh, had the one last week about VIX. You guys know where that one went out. Let's go to this week's question of the week. And we asked you, you know, straddles. Bit of a mixed reputation out there. Some love them, others hate them. Quite simply, do you trade straddles? We gave you two straightforward answers. And then our patented curveball. And we said, yes, I love them. No, I hate them. Or I prefer flies slash condors. Numbers are interesting. A lot of you have been chiming in on this one too. J4340 says, strangles, yes, but straddles, generally, no, he won't trade them. Age of Del Aquarius. I just love this guy's handle. He says, selling straddles, no. Unlimited upside risk on the naked call. Buy straddles, no. I don't take trading advice from infomercials. (laughs) Flies and condors, yup. Yes, obviously you listen to the the early days of the network when we used to lament about the late night infomercials telling you to effectively buy straddles. Uh, Let's see. And Swish Poor says he likes straddles, but not as much as the covered strangle. Uh, Mr. Uncle Mike, first off, what are your thoughts on straddles? Do you yes, love them, no, hate them, or do you prefer flies or condors? And then B, more importantly, what do you think our audience is voting for? Sorry about that. I just had a mute button issue, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be like the Rock Lobster. You are today. channeling the Rock Lobster, and now you have to go murder some crickets. I must be. So 
Anyway, in terms of what I like, I like looking at the straddle to see what the expected move is going to be, but it's been, I can't even tell you how many years it's been since I've tr actually traded a straddle. So uh, I'm pretty much a bullish kind of guy. And so I'll use butterflies and I'll use uh, things like that, but only in a bullish manner. So uh, it's just not my game. What do you think our audience is voting for? Uh, I'll say straddles. Do you say yes? Okay. And Mr. Mr. Rocklops, the same question for you. Are you a fan of straddles, not a fan? Do you prefer flies or condors? And where do you think our audience has fallen, sir? Um, I, you know, I, I like I like the straddle on a short-term trade, um, like in SPY. Uh, I think a lot of times that vol gets super cheap in those weeklies. Um, so as a trade, sometimes I like it there. Um, mostly stocks, I, I tend to lean one way or another. So it's like more like strangly action, like long delta or short delta depending um uh but straddles really indexes when you know i think they they, they kind of oversell the short-term ball um as far as uh are the audience probably not straddles i'm gonna say like iron condors i would guess even though it's probably one of my least favorite trades but um uh I would guess I would guess the audience is saying that. I don't think they're saying straddle action. All right, you guys have about 24 hours left to go play. Listeners at options to make your voice heard. Right now, the audience is saying you love straddles. 47, almost 47.5% saying yes. 31.6% uh, saying I prefer flies to condors. And no, I hate them, only getting about 21%. So I'm surprising. I thought it would be a little, bit, a little bit different out there. Let's keep on rolling. Let's get some more of you on here. Let's go on out. Oh, <laughs> Tucson. How can I forget? This has got to be the tweet of the week, the comment of the week, whatever you want to call it. This wins. Whatever our prize is for this, it wins. This comes from Chinook. I remember that name. He's written in before. And uh, he copied you on this, Mike, because I know you saw it too. He <laughs> it just brings a smile to my face whenever I see it. He sent us this tweet. He said, I saw this on a car and immediately thought of the option block. And he took a picture of it, sent us a picture of this thing. It ends up also linking to a video on Amazon. And what they are, listeners, they're called Elbow Drop Wrestler Wiper Tags. And you, what you do is you, and the picture and the image he, he, show, he sent us was of someone has a sticker of Hulk Hogan laid out flat on their back rear windshield. And then attached to the rear wiper going back and forth is Macho Man in the elbow drop position and so what you have is every time the wiper goes from right to left he just does an elbow drop on a prone hogan over and over again yes that is awesome chinook a that brought a smile to my face thank you for sure i've never even heard of such a thing and b i need we need a gross of those for everybody here on the show because those are amazing i went to your link on amazon i think it's just a video i can't see a way to buy these things but if you guys know how to get these elbow drop wrestler wiper tags. <laughs> I need some. Mr. Uncle Mike, on a level of 1 to 87 billion, how awesome are these? I think you made the scale too low. I mean, that is the coolest thing. And uh, I actually need some new wiper blades, so I'm definitely going to be looking into that, quite honestly. If you don't get these, you are never coming on the show again, sir. You, you are dead to me. <laughs> I know I've said that many times. This time you would be dead to me. Who can forego? Macho Man. I love they have Macho Man dropping. It's not like the other way. It's not like somebody else or it's not like Hogan winning. It's Macho Man dropping. Is he the only one who gets to do the elbow drop? Are there other ones they have? I'll have to I don't know. I don't know anything about this brand, but I am I am deeply intrigued. <laughs> Thank you for that, Chinook. You have sent us down a very evil rabbit hole, but a good one. Nonetheless, here. This looks like someone asking about silver and gold. Uncle Mike, you already kind of talked about that. At the top of the show. So instead, let's keep on rolling into our final segment. It is time to go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, everybody. Welcome to Around the Block, the portion of the show where we do just that. We go around the horn here and see what we're keeping an eye on. For the rest of this week, it's kind of hard to focus on anything outside of D.C. these days. But Uncle Mike, we'll start with you. What are you fixating on for the rest of the week, sir? Uh, just the D.C. comics. Oh, wait. No, not it's D.C. in general, not D.C. comics. Oh, wait. It's kind of hard to tell these days. Um, yeah, I think that that's the big thing right now is will they, won't they with the debt ceiling? And even if they 
do have the problem and they don't get it done by the 18th, they'll probably get it done in the next couple of days afterwards. But I'm pretty optimistic that they'll get taken care of beforehand. They're going to strike a deal at the 11th hour. So my prediction is um, whatever the actual official to the minute deadline is, they'll get it done probably about 30 minutes beforehand. So that way they can have a big news announcement and uh, do a lot of political pandering that way. So that's what I think is going to happen. Watching also the 4,300 level in the SPX, uh, we, we have not gone below that. So seeing if we can continue to hold that during all of this nonsense. Nonsense indeed. And how dare you, sir? How dare you imply that our political leaders would, would stage something solely for the publicity value, sir? How dare you? You should be ashamed. You know, the thing I like about this show is you, you won't allow us to say our political beliefs so long as we bash all politicians. And quite honestly, that's very similar to what my actual political beliefs are. So I love it. Bash them all like the aforementioned cricket aside. Just push them all aside. Mr. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Rock Lobster, sir, I know you're busy murdering crickets, but uh, what are you keeping an eye on for the rest of this week until maybe Evolve use tomorrow? I have, I, I believe I am uh, victorious over the crickets. I have crushed them. So um, uh, this continuous on again, off again, yes, bash all politicians, because I have to say, I'm not feeling a lot of value out of our political class because they, they sure do get paid a lot, give themselves a lot of breaks and don't seem to play by the same rules. Like we, we didn't even talk about the guys in the Fed um, you know, the, uh, the, oh, the uh, insider traders. Trading. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The traders. <laughs> like, we didn't even get to that. What the hell is that? <laughs> he couldn't do his duties. He was too distracted by trading. I'm sorry. I had to just go. I had to freaking fling these e minis like Steve Cohen, you know? Uh, anyway. Uh, so, yeah, I'm looking, you know, all right. Um, I, again, looking at um, like the stuff that I look at, everything again, suspended animation and. Trying to get stuff done, like I said, kind of jello, you know, fingers in the jello type of ball. Not a lot of action. I think, you know, if if there's stocks that you're interested in and they get to good prices, um, you know, certainly uh, that's what I think there's I think there's some value in uh, those commodity stocks. They're at lows of uh, the year, like lows, like the whole year just didn't even exist. And I, I don't know if that's exactly right. I think there is a lot of pent up demand from this COVID thing. There are countries that are. Um, basically doing away with all mandates, you know, all of Scandinavia, Singapore. Um, so uh, you figure maybe some politicians would figure it out. But um, anyway, I, overall, I think I agree with my, it's like like bullish on economic growth and the internet and all that kind of stuff. Um, short term though, as Washington is showing us, there's clearly no end of stupidity from all of them. Just no end of stupidity. No end Indeed. Unfortunately, there is an end to this show, so we got to keep on rolling. But don't worry, you know, our content hasn't ended for today. I'll be back in about exactly half an hour with the once in future Dr. Bix to break down all the action on the volatility across the broad range of the commodity futures options spectrum. So if such a thing intrigues you, stay tuned. We'll be back just then. If you're listening after the fact, like many of you are, just hit next on whatever freaking player. Literally, I just looked this. There are literally more platforms. Hitting us up this morning as we speak. Our verbal is the new one. The day before that, it was, I think, Reason. There's so many. There's new podcast platforms all the time. So you have no excuse. There's a litany of places for you guys to find this content now. But before we go, let's go back around the horn. Mr. Uncle Mike, we'll start with you. If folks have questions about silver or anything else under the sun, where should they go? What should they do? Well, follow me on Twitter at Mike Tusaw, T O S A W. I write content often and try to share it on Twitter and I'll be doing more video updates as the weeks go by on all things, uh, well, not all things silver, but all things, a lot of things, just what's on my mind with the markets. And if you're looking for a financial advisor who's not afraid to delve and oftentimes dive into the option product, assuming it is okay and fits your needs and objectives, uh, feel free to reach out to me. My website is stcharleswealth.com. I should also say at that handle, he is also open to receiving all of your awesome 80s wrestling related paraphernalia gifts and images like we saw this week with the wipers so if you have anything like that hit him up it will definitely tickle his heart make sure you copy us because we want to see it too <laughs> all right and let's go on out to the land of the rock lobster don't send him 80s wrestling related stuff because it's like falling on deaf ears you want to send him anti-cricket weapons he might be more excited mr rock lobster where should they go to send you such info sir 
Um, you can send it to me at, uh, okay, andrewadoptionpit.com. Go to our website, go to memberships. I run our trading legion and capital gains and our pro, uh, our, uh, our, our pro education series, our edge hunt series, uh, ball trade club, all that kind of stuff. We don't have any great hats or t-shirts yet, but I know we will soon because we're growing like crazy and we need some good swag. So anyway, come on over to Option Pit. If you want to learn how options work and you like all the madness that goes on in this show, uh, it's very similar in Option Pit. <laughs> so hop on over, uh, hop on to OptionPit.com and get your learning on. Similar level of madness just with the cricket murder taken to 11. And unfortunately, that's it for this show, like we said. But we'll see you back here. We'll listen in live in about half an hour, a little less than that now, for all things TWIFO, what's hot and happening in the world of all things trading on CME. Come find out on TWIFO tomorrow, noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern for volatility views. And then back for all of you in the secret club, 2 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Eastern for options oddities. I got a feeling we got some cool things to talk about there tomorrow, too. So a lot to stay tuned for, a lot to look forward to. We'll see you back here later on today for TWIFO. And then, of course, back again tomorrow for all those shows. Then back again on Monday, another episode of The Option Block. See you then. You're listening to The Options Insider Radio Network, the home of The Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash The Options Insider, or via questions at TheOptionsInsider.com.